We turn now to the Republican chairman of the Intelligence Committee, Ohio Congressman Mike Turner. Good to have you back. Thank you. Do you have any sense yet of the scale of the damage caused by the leak of this classified material by apparently this 21-year-old airman who has been arrested? Not completely, but clearly there's damage that's done. I mean, we have documents classified because we don't want them to get in the hands of our adversaries, and these have been widely circulated, so obviously these are, are, are damaging both the United States and to our allies. You know, what's troubling here is, you know, when you look at the documents that were circulated, that uh, you know, with, uh, without a, the care of, of its handling, you know, these relate to actual real people. The marks on maps are, are real people, and they can inf impact people's lives, and that's certainly our concern. President Biden said when it came to the content of the messages and information, he wasn't concerned. You seem to disagree with that. Well, I can tell you President Zelensky certainly would be concerned, and so would our other allies. Um, whenever we're trusted with information, when we're working in partnership with someone, you know, our in intelligence gathering, our intelligence information, if it is released, can represent a vulnerability to them. Uh, mm -hmm. So obviously it's an issue uh, that's troubling uh, and that, that needs to be addressed. In the, the outcome for the Ukraine conflict, though, it's early enough, and these are static documents, meaning they're pictures of a p exact period of time, and uh, mitigation can happen, people can change their strategies, and, and that can change the outcome. I asked this question to Senator Kelly about the concern of Ukraine running through its ammunition stocks too quickly. Right. You're so some of these that. documents would be in the, in the form of management documents. When you look at inventories or depleting inventories, uh, they, too, are static. Uh, what they show is a to-do list and what we need to do and our allies need to do to help Ukraine uh, to replenish uh, those. It doesn't indicate that they have no other sources and that, in fact, they'll, they, they will, uh, will run out and be completely open and vulnerable to Russia. Okay. So not necessarily, it would be a leap to say Russia will have air dominance yes. on this date because they run out of this thing. On the leak itself, um, the individual who is accused here, Mr. Texera, there's video that's circulated of him saying racist things, shooting guns, anti-Semitic things. He's apparently posted these things on social media and they were there undetected for a long period of time. What part of this needs to change? Because clearly the protocols failed. Right, absolutely. And if you look at the actual complaint and affidavit that was filed when he was arraigned, you, you have the, um, the also admission from the Department of Defense that they are able to track his movements. So clearly he was having access to documents that he should not have had access to. And someone should have been paying attention tapping him on the shoulder and, and ending that access. But in this instance, as you just indicated, you know, through life patterns, there were clearly signals that, that he would, might be a likely uh, leaker of information in the future. And then also the access that he was having to this information uh, should have been cut off. He should have never been having access to this level of, of classified information that could hurt the United States. But he was working basically in tech support. It wasn't necessarily analyzing this information. Right. He had no reason. There no, was no need to know for him of the information that he was accessing. And the Department of Defense admits in the affidavit that they had the ability to track him. That's going to be the questions my committee is going right. to be having. So we're going to be having hearings on this. And what we need to do, and from the 9-11 Commission, we learned that we needed to more widely disseminate classified information so that people had actionable intelligence that right. they could piece together puzzles. Clearly, we've gone too far, and where we have an instance where someone in Massachusetts who's looking at documents with respect to war plans in Ukraine and the Department of Defense knows, and that's what our committee is going to be looking at, is how do we make certain that we make changes? I want to, so to make those changes, I want to ask you to clarify this, um, because there are some conservatives saying things, like Tucker Carlson has, your colleague Marjorie Taylor Greene, in defense of this individual, this 21-year-old man. Um, she called him essentially heroic, white male Christian anti-war, an enemy to the Biden regime. She said he told the truth about troops being on the ground in Ukraine and a lot more. Well, first off, let's be clear. Uh, there, are, there are no U.S. troops on, on the ground in Ukraine other than the troops that are normally at an embassy right. protecting the embassy. We do not have They're boots not on, on the, the ground. Field. We do not have, have, uh, have troops on the ground. So it's absolutely in, incorrect assumption from the documents that, that this um, uh, individual leaked. The other aspect is um, he's guilty of, of if he's brought through this process and he's found guilty, it will be of espionage. It's of being a traitor to your country. That's not someone who to, be, to look up to. That is someone who has compromised his country and has certainly compromised uh, our allies. That's not the oath that he took. That's not the job that he took. Right. 
Um, you are in the Gang of Eight, that small group of lawmakers that gets access to some of the most uh, classified information, including the documents that were found at the residence of President Biden, uh, President Trump, and former Vice President Pence. Have you looked at the documents, and are your questions answered? Right. No, so the Department of Justice has not been forthcoming in this, and they've, they've been somewhat disingenuous, and certainly both the House and the Senate are going to have to address this. One, the documents that were delivered to Congress are not complete, and secondly, they don't identify whose documents they were, whether they came from the trove um, of Biden's behind the uh, Corvette or whether or not they came from Mar Largo. Uh, that obviously has that to be addressed. Timing. timing ought to be able to right. tell us, but still at the same time to deliver those documents without even designating whose documents they work clearly shows you know, a, a, an unwillingness to be work closely with Congress. Uh, and this also, it's incomplete. I can tell you this, in the reviews that we've had so far of indexes that do include the documents, there's no nuclear codes here. There's no, no one had anything that, that, that uh, was of extreme imminent threat. Have you seen everything? States. Or we've the seen the, the index of them. Okay. We've gotten some of the documents delivered to us. Um, but the Department of Justice really needs to, to come clean. They need to deliver the documents to Congress. Uh, they promised them to us. And they, they need to work with us so that we can get an assessment of what happened here. There are laws that need to be changed so that we can more protect our classified documents yeah. than those who handle them. Uh, and so we, we need them to work with us. The White House gave access to the classified after action report on Afghanistan about a week ago. Have you seen it yet? I have. And? Um, the Well, so the, um, I'm, um, I'm very concerned that the Biden administration is looking more for fault uh, blame and blame than really action items as to what we need to do. What, what clearly happened here um, in the abrupt uh, departure from Afghanistan is that a number of mistakes were made. We can only make certain that we don't repeat those mistakes if we're able to, to mm -hmm. really understand them. Congress has put together an Afghan commission uh, that is reviewing our time there and our exit. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a very helpful avenue also of getting understanding of what happened and how do we not do this again? Congressman, uh, it's good to have you here. There's a lot to get through, and uh, we hope to have you back soon.